Welcome to the Metro Lutheran Ministry Financial Opportunity Center's video. This is Coach Troy, and today we're going to talk about budgeting using old school versus fintech or the new school methods. Just a brief reminder for you that the MLM is the FOC is a nonprofit organization. We're dedicated to helping you improve your financial literacy, your financial health, and even finding and maintaining some employment. We are an initiative of Bliss Kansas City and the United Way. So we're gonna talk about old school budgeting today. Now, you know, I've put out several videos about budgeting and how to manage that. And we're gonna briefly review that. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about FinTech or the new school methods for budgeting that might be available to help you. So hang on, if you've already seen the budgeting videos, we'll get to the new stuff here at the end of this short video. All right, so here we go. Old school budgets using envelopes. That's kind of the tried and true method. It works really well. That's where you're gonna track everything that you spend over the next 30 days. And every time you spend anything, even if you just get a soda at McDonald's, you're gonna save that receipt. And you're gonna put it in an envelope that matches the category that you're tracking. Now, this particular picture shows five categories, but I've seen people do this with up to 10 envelopes, maybe more. Um, I give out five, but you may decide you want to do 10. But you track every penny for 30 days and put it in a category. Then you're going to take that information at the end of the 30 days, and you're going to put it into a tracking system. In this case, it's going to be this lovely cash flow budget where each week you'll list how much money came in, your income, and how much money went out, the outgo, right? And then you'll know where you're spending your money and it gives you a nice place to start as you're looking at it. Now, if you want a copy of that form, all you gotta do is send me a message and let me know. The nice thing is, is if you do it on a tablet or a laptop, it is uh, self-filling. So you put in the numbers in the individual slots and then it does the math to follow through on your cash flow so you know what's happening. Uh, it's a great tool and it's available from us here at the FOC. All right. So that's old school budgeting. We've talked about old school budgeting a lot. Um, that's the first thing that you could look at. However, some people aren't happy with the old school. They want to look into FinTech. Now, FinTech is just a shortened up version because we, in this country, have, you know, we, we don't like to say all the words. It just stands for financial technology. And so these are specifically the top three apps that I saw on Forbes. Um, that are discussing or how to help you with your budgeting. Okay, so these are specifically applications helping you budget. Now, there are a few things that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind about each of these three apps, all right? Number one is they're each based on the old school method of using budget envelopes. They just do it online. They do it on your phone, they do it on your tablet, whatever it is. And it's nothing really different. It's just, do you have to carry around envelopes? Or can you, for example, take a picture of the receipt and have it just automatically do stuff? So that's available in some of these. Some of these are free, so it's not gonna cost you anything to use these. You just download the app. Others are gonna have either um, advanced levels that you have to pay for or some of that nature. So be aware, some are free, some are not. Some are gonna require that you connect your account um, to the app so that it's tracking the information that's in your bank accounts. And while that's probably gonna be generally an okay thing to do, it's also for some people a, a, a non-starter. They don't want to do that. So check them out, see if they would have, if they require that before you decide one way or the other. Um, and that's why really, you know, as always, do your own research, make sure you're comfortable with the terms and conditions of what's going on there. And if you're comfortable with it, we're gonna talk about three that might be really good opportunities. All right, so the first of these is Intuit's Mint. Now the Mint app, according to everything I've been able to read and find, is the most popular budgeting app out there. It's made by Intuit, who are the same people that bring you TurboTax every tax season. And it will track your information you set up categories just like you would with envelopes um, you connect it to your account everything runs fine what mint does is uses some mathematical algorithms 
to suggest to you where you might be spending too much money. It will let you put in how much of a savings goal you have, and it will suggest ways that you could pull out of that budget um, that amount of savings. So it has its benefits of doing that. Mint is free, it will not cost you anything. However, it will show you ads. It will show you suggested products and services that it thinks you might like. But if you can avoid having to do the ads, then you might be wanting to consider using Mint right into it. The next one is Good Budget. Now, Good Budget is a budget app. And I mean that in both senses. It's an app that helps you with your budget. It's also on the lower end of things in terms of what it does for you. Good Budget is awesome if you are somebody who is well disciplined. So if you really like the paper version, but you just would like to get rid of all the clutter of the paper, if you're solid with being able to track things, this might be your option. It does not have all the mathematical algorithms to tell you where you're spending too much and stuff like that. Its basic version is free. You can use its basic version and it won't cost you a penny ever. But it's basically just gonna have you enter in how much did you spend? Okay, it goes into what category? and give you that information. It's not going to do the extra work that Mint does to tell you where you might be able to save. If you want to add more categories or add a little bit more functionality, Good Budget does have the ability to jump in here and spend a little extra money. I think it's like $50 a year and it will give you some added benefits. And our third one of our top three FinTech budget apps is the YNAB, You Need a Budget app. Now, the You Need a Budget app is much more like Intuit's Mint app, okay? It lets you set up categories, savings targets, stuff like that. And it has the algorithms behind it to show you where you're probably overspending and those types of things. Now, it's free for the first 30 days, but after that, it's gonna charge you $7 every month to be able to use that app. Now, I'm not endorsing one of these over the other, but let me say this, if you look at these two and you think Mint does pretty much the same thing that you need a budget app does, one of them costs you $7 a month, one of them doesn't. I'm just saying that $7 could be given a job somewhere else instead of paying for an app. Although the app in and of itself is just as high quality as Mint, so it's really a decision for you to make do you like the way it does it and its usability for you better than men? All right. All right. So those are the three that Forbes says are the top three uh, for most of the folks that we would be talking about looking here. If you'd like to talk more about how to do your budget, more about financial technology, give us a call here at the Metro Lutheran Ministries Financial Opportunity Center. This is Coach Troy again, and our number, as always, is 816-285-3131. And don't forget, check us out on YouTube, check us out on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and whatever you do, remember every day that you can to feed the pig.